What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Tuck Notes, Beginner Stock Talk. My name's Tucker, and tonight's topic is Tesla stock. We'll be going over, coming up as talking about Tesla stock, we'll be going over Elon Musk and the recent stock sales that he sold. Um, remember, he had those stocks and what to expect for Tesla going into 2022. We're also gonna cover the massive bullish news that's came out about Tesla's Gigafactory in Berlin, Germany. And that factory starting in 2022. And we also will cover an interview, and we'll be talking about an interview about Elon Musk's tax and the recent interview he did in and that. So with that, Bam, Tesla closed at $1,008.87. It's up about 7.5%, 7.49, which is about $70.34. Uh, it was an unbelievable day for Tesla, believe me. And uh, it opened up at 966 and it went up to over 1,000. It slowly went, crept its way up and then it went up to 1,000, a little bit higher and then pulled back and then consolidated at the closing price of 1,008 basically, or 1,000 we could say. Now the overall stock market was kind of mixed mixed around, but um, this is the beginning of the Santa Claus rally. If you don't know what that is, uh, Google it. Um, but we expect the momentum and continuation for this to go hopefully into Christmas and possibly into the end of the new year end of the year, sorry. Uh, the massive news today uh, was that Elon had finished his selling his shares of stock. But has he finished, I gotta read this part for you guys. <clears throat> Elon Musk had finished his selling, selling, selling his shares of stock, but has he finished his stock shares? All right, now we're gonna watch a video, short video about um, what this man has to say about that. saying he sold 10% of his stake in Tesla. That was the goal he set back in November with that famous Twitter poll in an interview with the Babylon B. Musk saying, quote, I've sold enough stock to get to around 10% plus the options exercise stuff. SEC filings, however, show he still could have more selling to go. As of last night's filings, he'd sold around 13.5 million shares. His goal was 17 million, so he has about another 3.5 million shares to sell. Now that options exercise stuff that he talks about, that's the $23 billion worth of options he has to exercise by August. His tax bill on that will be more than $11 billion. That's the highest in US history. Now that we know he has more selling to do because he still has 3 million more options to exercise. And if he doesn't exercise those, he would be leaving about $3 billion on the table. You look at the stock today, it's up about 7%, still down around 18% since that poll in November. So when all the dust and the noise settles here, Sarah and Mike will probably be down somewhere between sort of 13, 18%, which is what everyone expected going into these sales to begin with. Yeah, I was going to say, Robert, I mean, in some respects, I mean, this could just have been very routine. Other founder CEOs, they just kind of mechanically sell off shares. He had to make a little bit of, a, of an event and a populist moment out of it. But there was also, I, I guess, at some point, this idea that in addition to the expiring options that he would need to exercise, there would, might have been some incentive to get take the gains in this tax year. Is that a relevant issue right now? I mean, do we see, you know, that being a disadvantage if he starts selling stock in 2022 on a tax? Spaces? It's very relevant because if you look at the stock sales, there were two buckets. One was the pre scheduled sales that were part of the options exercise and the taxes. There was another $6 billion that was completely discretionary, quote, to his pocket that was, as you likely point out, probably due to tax increases at the federal level. He doesn't pay state taxes because he now lives in, in Texas, but he clearly wanted to get this done this calendar year before taxes might go up starting January. Might go up and start in January. So that's the little tidbit on the taxes. And if you want to get uh, more information about him, 
Elon and his, uh, when he sells his shares, you can go to secform4.com and you should be able to find uh, his when he sells if you really want to get into that part. Now, Elon sold about, um, he sold 500,000 shares uh, at $904. And he did a recent interview about his taxes and what he thinks about the politicians. And so we will watch a video on that also because I want you guys to know as much as I know. And this is really cool because this shows a lot of leadership in this video. So check it out. Manager on me, Senator Karen. <laughs> she calls me a freeloader. Yeah and a grifter doesn't pay taxes basically and i'm actually paying the most tax that any individual in history has ever paid this year ever and she doesn't pay taxes basically at all and her salary is paid for by the taxpayer like me could you even <laughs> if you could die by irony she would be she would be dead <laughs> my so-called wealth is it, not some it's, it's not some deep mystery it's not you know, the, the, some function of, of sort of hoarding or something. It's, it's simply that Tesla's value is, especially because the value is not, it's not up to me, it's up to investors. Um, and they decided it was worth, Tesla was worth a trillion dollars. And I own 20% of the company. So, you know, I don't want to take money off the table and then if the companies fail, I'll be sort of enriched while investors suffer. And that does not seem right. A captain should go down, you know, with their shit. SpaceX and Tesla came very close to bankruptcy many times. Bankruptcy was literally weeks away. I did not tell them. Unless you sell stock, there are no realized gains. So I don't draw a salary or any cash salary or bonus from the companies at all. Like there was one year, I think, uh, I didn't put all this effort into building SpaceX and, and uh, Tesla because I thought they were easy ways to make money. This is not about like trying to enrich myself. Um, I do not live a life of cons conspicuous consumption. I think what Tesla's doing is important to the future. Um, and that. And that's the end and so i like that analogy about the boat captain and ship you know that's a true leader so here's some great news that uh i think everyone will like is that it's been get well first uh tesla finally submitted their documents they needed to uh start the production in the uh, giga factory of berlin i, I mean yeah berlin Giga, whatever you want to call it. This is great news. And there have been getting challenges by the environmentalist groups over there. They say the small amount of water pressure that the company uh, it's getting and the amount of the water it's getting is not good. So they, the environmentalists, challenge that. And so Tesla uh, basically they finished submitting their documents they needed for the environmental approval that would allow the production to happen to start in Berlin. It's really critical that that happens. Um, now, another positive thing is this is, a ma uh, this is massive. We know production is supposed to start at the end of the year. They're supposed to be producing the Model Y and the key, this is the key gigafactory that we need for the European market. So watch out once we get word that it opens, um, because when the officials, uh, you know, say in the news officially that they started production, Tesla will explode to the upside, could explode. I'll just say could explode to the upside. Now, this factory is important because they will be producing batteries and cars, not just cars. Um, and this helps the Tesla dominate the European market. Uh, right now, the vehicles are being produced out of Shanghai and are shipped from China to Europe. And they're saying that's taken a long time. I wonder why, who, who comes first? Um, so, before I get into the deep technical analysis right now, I'd just like, if you guys, gals, guys, like my videos, please subscribe and push the notification bell so you know that whenever I post a video, uh, 
you know it. So it's helpful to you, it's a benefit. So the Tesla technical analysis that we can basically can't, the question is, can we see Tesla double in 2022? Um, that's a crazy thought. Now we're sitting at $1,000. We've tested the resistance level as we approached, but we'll test the resistance level as we approached uh, 2022. And if we can stay above a thousand, uh, and even go to maybe 1,050 or 1,100, that's good news. But the important question is, can Tesla double in 2022? There's the, now I'll give you some ma massive catalysts that are, that are on our side. One, the, there'll be important news coming out about numerous things. Two, the earnings report is coming in January at the end, I think on the 26th. Three, Texas, the Gigafactory is almost finished and it's close to starting production in Berlin. And four, we have Austin, Texas, Berlin, or, sorry, Berlin, Austin, Texas factory going on. So that's, that's great. So pause, so if Tesla can break out to 1300 or 1500, uh, we might see a Tesla stock split announcement that could happen, uh, you know, coming soon if all of, if all of the things happen and Tesla breaks out uh, that is going to increase the momentum and Tesla could potentially double to 2000 without any, ne if there's no negative catalysts. That's like a perfect picture, but that's, I don't know. I try to stay, you know, you don't nev you never know, right? So recent uh, conservative prices, like I mentioned yesterday with Morgan Stanley, uh, 1,200 is what they are. There's another analyst that thinks it's gonna be at 1,500, but Tesla stock could double in 2022 and it might not be at the end of the year. So uh, I hope this video is helpful. If you like the video, push like button. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at TuckerMLO. And I hope you guys have a good night and I will talk to you the next time. Late, peace out.